Hi there, my name is Caitlin Bandy and this is my channel Bandy's Books and today we are here to talk February pile of possibilities. Before we jump into that, I know that my bookshelves look a mess behind me. That's because they are under construction. I had to pull off a bunch of books to make my potential TBRs for the next couple months. And I also have so many ARCs and things that I've received that I need to like organize. So I am in the process of reorganizing everything. So forgive the mess. But we keep it real here. This is what it looks like in my house when I'm tearing everything apart. It's not all pretty, super nice, organized shelves all the time. So before we jump into my pile of possibilities, I wanted to mention that today I received some exciting news. I got selected to judge the first round of the nonfiction category for the booktube prize. If you're unfamiliar with the booktube prize, the announcement video was today and I'm going to be linking it in the description. So make sure you check it out. But basically for my round, I will be reading six nonfiction books and then I will be ranking them in the order of how much I liked them. Unfortunately, during this process, I'm not allowed to review those books publicly. Like I can state what I read, but I can't really tell you how I felt about them until the votes have been submitted. So I am not really gonna talk about those books in my TBR, but there are six nonfiction books that I'm gonna be reading and I have until the end of March to do that. So I'm hoping to maybe get to three of them in February and three of them in March. That way I have plenty of time to read each one, kind of digest it and think about it. So I just wanted to add that little caveat in there that these are separate books from what I have on my pile of possibilities. I also wanted to mention that I'm gonna be reading The Forbidden Notebook by Alba de Cespedes. This is for a book club that I'm a part of. Uh, Scott at Gunpowder Fiction Plot hosts two separate book clubs via his Patreon, both of which I've had the joy of participating in and they're a lot of fun. So this month his translated fiction book club is picking Forbidden Notebook, so I'll be reading for that. So now into my pile of possibilities. First, I have a couple audiobooks that I wanna mention and then I'm gonna get into my physical stack. So the first of my audiobooks is Coleman Hill by Kim Coleman Foote. This is the story of two American families whose fates become intertwined in the wake of the great migration. Next up on the audio list, I have Our Lady of Mysterious Ailments and The Mystery at Dunvegan Castle, both of which are by T.L. Huchu. This is kind of a paranormal fantasy mystery sort of a vibe. I read the first book a couple months back and I enjoyed it. It probably wasn't the most amazing book that I've ever read, but it was interesting enough to keep me invested in reading the second book. The books are set in Edinburgh, Scotland, and they follow a young woman named Ropa who has the ability to speak to ghosts and she gets drawn into different mysteries and she goes about investigating them. She also has some family struggles. There's a financial burden that's on her and so she's always working to earn money to try to like put her family in a better situation. In book two, she ends up as an intern at a school and that internship prevents her from taking her usual revenue off of the mysteries that she's solving. Like I said, I enjoy Ropa as a character and I love the setting of Edinburgh. It's one of my favorite cities. Um, so I'm just sitting there visualizing the city as I read this book. So if book two is good, I'm gonna jump right into book three and get it done. Next up on audio, I have Everything Is Not Enough by Lola Akinmade Akerstrom. This story is gonna be following three black women as they deal with their own personal struggles within the egalitarian society of Sweden. This is the author that wrote In Every Mirror She's Black. I read that and really enjoyed it. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing what this next book is gonna bring. All right, so now we're gonna get into my physical pile of possibilities. And before we get into that, I just wanna say that February is Black History Month in the United States. And I'm super excited for the opportunity to highlight black authors with my TBR. But I also think that reading diversely is super important all other 11 months of the year. And so while I do have a Black History Month TBR, I just wanna make a note that that doesn't mean I'm not reading black authors or black stories in the rest of the year. So let's get into the books. First up, I have Parasol Against the Axe by Helen Oyeyemi. This is an ARC and this book will actually be releasing in March. I was so excited when I got sent this copy. I love Helen Oyeyemi's writing. I think she comes up with such interesting concepts. It's just very, very unique. This book is set in Prague and we have some women that are attending a bachelorette party, but people start showing up to the bachelorette party that were not invited. And I think there's gonna be kind of a question of what's going on, is this like alternate reality? Is there some issues with sanity or people like hallucinating, delusional? So I'm really looking forward to getting into this one. And speaking of Helen Oyeyemi, I also have Boy Snow Bird, which is a retelling or a recasting of Snow White. 
I've heard really good things about this one and I'm really looking forward to jumping into it. Then I have NW by Zadie Smith. And this is a book that features four Londoners who are kind of trying to find their way outside of their childhood neighborhood of Caldwell. Then I have the first of my romance books and that is The Right Swipe by Alicia Ray. This is about a woman who is the creator of a dating app. She's very jaded about love. She's focused on her career. She's not really trying to have a relationship. That is until she has a hot, passionate night with a football player and then he disappears. So she thinks she's been ghosted and then a while later he shows up working for one of her rival's companies. And then he promises her that if she gives him a second chance, he won't fumble it this time. I don't know anything about this author, honestly. I don't know anything about this book. I haven't heard reviews of it. Um, so if you've read it, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. I'm hoping this will be a nice, light, fluffy read. And then I have Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. This is a book that I think is kind of telling the story of a younger black woman who is working for a rich white family. She's a nanny and at some point she goes to a store with their child and she's accused of kidnapping the child because she's black and the child's white. And I think that the repercussions of that event trickle all through different aspects of her life. Then I have The Door of No Return by Kwame Alexander. This is a book that is about the Ashante people who live in what is now modern day Ghana. This is a sort of a series, I don't know too much about it, but the back of it says that it is a trilogy that tells the story of a boy, a village, and the epic odyssey of an African family. I love a good series, so I'm hoping that this is gonna be a really good start. Then I have The Secret Diaries of Charles Ignatius Sancho by Patterson Joseph. I've been hearing so many good things about this book. I believe this is about the first black man to be able to vote in Britain. I think it's even more remarkable because this is in like the mid 1700s. There are still slave catchers out there and Charles is in like a very precarious situation. So I'm really looking forward to this one. A lot of people that I really trust their opinions have said that this is fantastic. And then I always try to read a classic during Black History Month as well. Last year, I read two books by James Baldwin and it broke the classics curse for me. I really enjoyed both of them. And so this year I thought I would try out Zora Neale Hurston. I have their eyes were watching God. This is a book about a woman and her three marriages. And I think it's kind of about her growth and her experiences through these three marriages. I have heard that Hurston writes her stories the way that characters would speak. And so I'm really interested to get into that. Um, I've heard really good things and this will be my first time reading Hurston's writing. And then I have The Furrows by Namwali Serpel. This is about a family who tragically loses the youngest child in the family to a drowning. I think this is gonna explore the grief of all the different family members. Then I have my second romance and that's Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. This is about a couple who is just recently divorced and they're kind of finding their way into co-parenting and dealing with each other in a different dynamic. Things are starting to settle into a rhythm, but then, you know, there's this magnetism that keeps calling them back to each other and it's sexy and it's hot and it starts to open up all these old wounds. So I have a lot of friends on Bookstagram that read romance pretty exclusively. And almost all of my romance friends recommended this book. They all said that this was spectacular. A couple of them said it was one of their favorite reads of the year. I personally, when I've read romance in the past, tend to prefer romances that are complex and explore like emotional issues and relationship dynamics. So I'm hoping that this is gonna be a really powerful read for me. Then I have Let Us Descend by Jessamyn Ward. This is about a young woman who is a slave and she is being forced to march from one location to another. And in order to survive the brutality and the horrors that she's experiencing, she sinks into this spiritual plane and it connects her with her ancestors. I've heard kind of mixed reviews about this book, but I have personally really enjoyed Ward's previous books. I like her writing and that kind of gothic, really poetic, prosy sort of style that she has. So I'm hoping I'm really gonna enjoy this one. Then I have Black Earth Wisdom by Leah Penniman. This is probably one of my absolute favorite covers. I think this book is just so beautiful. So this book is dubbed as Soulful Conversations with Black Environmentalists. I have recently read quite a few different books on conservation and environmentalism. Uh, most recently, I read Fresh Banana Leaves by Dr. Jessica Hernandez, and I've also read Braiding Sweetgrass, some really fantastic books. So I'm hoping that this is going to add a different perspective to that conversation, maybe provide me with a bit more knowledge and understanding of black environmentalism. Then I have No Heaven for Good Boys by Keisha Bush. This is described as a modern day Oliver Twist set in Senegal. My mom read this and said it was brutal and really depressing, but super well-written. Uh, I have never read Keisha Bush before, but I'm very much looking forward to getting into this one. Then I have What Storm, What Thunder by Miriam J.A. Chansey. And this is a book that 
takes place shortly after a 7.0 magnitude earthquake hits Haiti. I think this follows the repercussions of the earthquake and how people are dealing in the aftermath. Um, I've heard pretty good things about this one. Then I have a book that I'm super excited about. I found it in a little free library on one of my recent trips and I couldn't believe it, honestly. And that's A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. This was a winner of the Man Booker Prize and I've heard really good things about this author. This will be my first time reading him. This particular book is about an attack on Bob Marley and his wife. And I know nothing about this history. I know honestly very little about Bob Marley. And so this will be a complete learning experience for me. Um, Again, I've heard fantastic things about this author and I usually typically like books from the Booker Prize for the most part. So I'm expecting that I'll really enjoy this. And then I have the first of my horror reads and that is Ring Shout by P. DeJelly Clark. So this is a book that I don't know very much about. I know that it involves the Ku Klux Klan and some people fighting back against them, but I've purposefully tried to avoid reading too much about this because I've heard so many fantastic things about it. I just didn't even wanna like spoil it to the smallest degree. This is a really short read. So I imagine I'm gonna tear through this one really quick. Then I have The God of Good Looks by Brianne McAvar. This is set in Trinidad and I think in the beauty industry, but I think this is actually more about a relationship between two people. I've heard that this is kind of a slower, more character driven story. And it's just exploring that like relationship dynamic. So maybe an unintentional romance pick as well. And then I have Right Within, How to Heal from Racial Trauma in the Workplace by Minda Hartz. This was a book I was sent by Seal Press. And while I'm not the target audience for this book, I think that I could do a lot of learning on how to be a better ally, how to be more understanding and more sympathetic, maybe more compassionate in the workplace environment. I think this is mostly giving women of color advice on how to work through microaggressions, how to stand up for themselves, how to advocate for raises and things like that. But I think that this is gonna bring up blind spots for me, areas that I could be more aware and definitely work to improve the workplace environment. So I'm looking forward to learning from this. Then I have a book that I actually picked up in Denver the last time I was visiting, um, and that is Mask Off by J.J. Bola. This is masculinity redefined. This is basically talking about the Western standard of toxic masculinity and why it's so toxic and what it means and how it came to be. Uh, this is a really interesting topic for me. And again, short read, but I think it's gonna be very impactful. Then I have The Great Mrs. Elias by Barbara Chase Rubeau. This is a story set in the 1800s in Philadelphia. And it's about a woman who comes from being dirt poor to being one of the wealthiest women in the country. And it's especially remarkable because it's the 1800s and she's a black woman. And then I have a book called They Want to Kill Americans by Malcolm Nance. So Malcolm Nance is a globally renowned security expert. So he's written this book about the state of things in the United States and what threats there are within the United States. Uh, I'm really looking forward to reading this. I think this is really interesting. I don't read a ton of stuff about current politics, so I'm really looking forward to the perspective on the things that have happened in the last few years. Then I have The Girl Who Smelled Beads by Clementine Wamaria. This is Clementine's memoir. She survives the genocide in Rwanda, and then her and her young sister spend several years wandering through seven different countries in Africa, looking for refuge and shelter. Eventually, they're both brought to the United States, but then their paths diverge. This is Clementine's story of survival and learning to live again after all of the horrors that she experienced. Then I have Jackal by Erin E. Adams. This is a horror story slash mystery. It's about a woman who returns to her hometown. She's very skeptical and hesitant to go home. There's a lot of racism in town that she remembers. And the only reason that she's returning is because her best friend is getting married and everything's going okay. She's there at the wedding, but then her best friend's child goes missing. And that's all I know about this story. I haven't actually heard very many reviews of this, but I was drawn in by this cover. But I was drawn in initially by this cover. I think the cover is very interesting and mysterious, and I'm looking forward to finding out more about this book. Then I have The Attic Child by Lola J. This is a book that my mom read a while back and then let me borrow. She said that this was so emotional and moving, so well written. She just was like, you're absolutely gonna love this. You have to read it. So this is a dual storyline. We have one storyline that's in the 1900s and one story that, and one storyline that's in like 1974. So in the 1900s, we have a young boy who is basically being kept in this attic and there are only small flashes of freedom in his life. And then in 1974, we have a different character who finds under the floorboards in the attic, some beads, a doll and a mysterious note. I'm really looking forward to getting into this one, but I also have a feeling that this is gonna be a heartbreaker as well. And then I have, You'll Never Believe What Happened to Lacey by Amber Ruffin and Lacey Lamar. So the way that I understand this is Amber Ruffin is a writer for some comedy shows and has her own show. And Lacey is her sister. Lacey lives in their hometown, which is kind of in the heartland of America. 
and is dealing with like a lot of microaggressions and racism. And this is basically the two of them getting together to tell these stories. And I've heard a couple reviews of this book. Everybody that I know that's read it has said it's hilarious, it's fantastic, it's brilliantly written. Um, they handle some really difficult subjects in a way that's easy to digest and understand. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to getting into this. I'm not actually really familiar with Amber Ruffin or her work on TV shows as I don't watch that much TV. After that, I have an orchestra of minorities by Chigosi Obioma. This is a book about a man who saves a woman when she is trying to jump off a bridge and they fall in love with each other. The gentleman is a poor chicken farmer and the woman comes from a very wealthy family. So the gentleman takes the opportunity to go to Cyprus to go to college, but when he gets to Cyprus, he finds out that things aren't as they seem. Uh, I haven't really heard anything about this. I saw that this received quite a bit of critical acclaim, but in terms of like people that I follow on booktube and bookstagram, I've never heard anything about this. Um, I don't know much about this author. This will be my first time reading him, but I'm really looking forward to getting into it. And finally, I have Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifueco. This is a fantasy story about a young woman who was raised in isolation and as she comes of age, she's sent to a competition to earn her spot in society. This sounds really good. I've heard really good reviews of this particular book. I haven't heard as much about the series as a whole, but I'm really looking forward to getting into it. I love a good fantasy story um, and I have high hopes for this one. So that is my entire pile of possibilities. As you can see, I have probably more books than I could get through in this entire month, even if I was retired. But like I said at the beginning, I really like the idea of picking a larger TBR so that I can kind of mood read within that TBR. Um, I know that this is gonna be a fantastic month because I just, I have a feeling that so many of these books are gonna be five stars and four stars. I can't wait to get started. I hope that you're as excited about your reading in February as I am. If you are, hit the like button, comment down below and let me know what's on your February TBR. And if you're not already subscribed to this channel, you know what to do, hit the subscribe button down below as well as the notification bell so that you never miss a video and that way we can see each other again soon. Thanks so much for joining, bye.